Hello and welcome to the project setup tutorial for Volta. Now you probably already have a project that you have been working with and you want to integrate Volta, that's fine. Um, for the sake of completion as well as showing the bare minimum, I am going to make a new project. So when I make a new project, I like to start from a third person template. I don't need any of the assets, I just want it to give me the inputs. And I use Blueprint instead of C++ because I find the classes that it gives you I end up deleting anyway. So we're just going to call this Vault that Tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go New Map. I hit Control N and went Default. And that will just unload the old map for memory. And I'm just going to delete everything. I don't need any of that. It really was just to get that input file. So go edit, project settings, gameplay tags. Now we're going to add a new gameplay tag. It's going to be called ability.vault. Then we're going to add state.vaulting. So we also need state.vaulting removal. Those are the three gameplay tags that Vaulting uses. Now unless you have a specific reason to not enable this, and if you have a reason you'll know already, then let's enable fast replication and add to commonly replicated tags. There's an engine bug so it's going to freeze while it uh, fails and ensure. So we'll just wait that out. There we are. And we're going to add state.vaulting and state.vaulting removal. So that's just a, um, well, it's exactly what it says here. Uses a bit less bandwidth, an index instead of a name, every time we vault. And because, well, let's go to input. And because we started from a third person template, we have action and access mapping set up for us. Now, if your game either allows vaulting from a separate key instead of only using jump, or has it as an option or whatever, then we just add it here. So while we're here, we also need a collision preset. And I'm just going to call it vault. You should too. Uh, query only. And it is of type pawn. Ignore the visible, ignore every trace channel. And what this does is it, every object that prevents us from vaulting, we cannot vault through something that is world static, dynamic, another pawn, or a physics body, a vehicle, or a disruptible. So they block us from vaulting. But perhaps if we had, I don't know, some kind of trigger that you can vault through, you'd want to ignore that. So we'll add that. And now we need to add vault it to the actual project. You can do this the other way around. I just find it is easier if you have the tag set up and ready to go. So we'll close this down. Now we want to go to our engine folder. And this will be in a different location depending on where you installed the Epic Launcher. So we go Unreal 426 or whatever version you're using. Engine, Plugins, Marketplace, Vault It. If it's missing, then you haven't installed it for this engine. Um, you might be wondering why we don't just leave it in the engine. Why do we want to put it in our project? It's quite simple. Let's say we start a project and we then go to a contract for, I don't know, a year and come back to it. It will be very out of date. So if Vaulted has continued to update without our project, then there might be a lot to catch up on and we might not want to do that. We might want to do it later, but we wouldn't be able to open our project until we fix everything. And we still get the updates because it's still installed to the engine. But because it's in the project, it's going to load the one in the project and not the one in the engine. 
So I made a plugins folder and I put Vault it in there. Of course, our project folder is out of date because now that it's in the engine, we go edit plugins. So now that it's in the project, it will have enabled itself by default. And this gives us Vault it content. If you can't see that, you need to go to the view options. If you left it in the engine, you need to enable both show plugin content and show engine content. Now, let's go into the Vault it content. Uh, we can just open up the map here. So it's just got a test map. And then if we come into our blueprints, this is a character that is parented under the VI character. So he has a Vault component. And you know the tags we set up, this is where they use. So ability.vault, state vaulting, state vaulting removal. And if you named your profile something else, it's in the vault trace settings that the profile name is set. You will notice that there is a vault input, which is assigned to V. I don't tend to modify blueprints that are part of a plugins content folder. I'll duplicate them out and set them up for my own use. You can change it here if you want to your vault input. It's entirely up to you. So the last thing we need to do is come into our project settings. Just type asset manager. There we are. We assign VI asset manager. Now you don't need to do this if you're already working with game playability system. This calls a single function, that, and there are other ways to call it. If you're using Gameplay Ability System yourself, or with another asset, it's probably already doing this. Okay, so we can just do a quick test. There's third person game mode here, and it's assigned here. And it's got this character assigned, so if I go play, and I press V, it vaults. So we have our project set up correctly for Walter. And that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.